Right, so in the last video, we made an animation of the Sierpinski triangle by allowing points D, E, and F to generate three children that move according to predefined functions. Those children then had more children, and those children had more children, and the process continued until the Sierpinski triangle was clearly visible. I want to talk about this animation in particular because we may have massively over-engineered the problem for fun. Firstly, let's look at the problem again from the perspective of the trees we're generating. Every time a new generation of children are born, we increase the number of points in the simulation by 3 raised to the generation number. Thus, the number of points grows exponentially. If each node holds a tuple of the XY location for each point, then the memory footprint also grows exponentially. Honestly, the simplest way of creating this animation would be to fully generate the tree we want in the end, in this case up to four generations, and then do a breadth first search over the elements. Now, look, this would definitely work for the purposes of the video we were making at the time. We only needed 10 generations at most, so there was no reason not to store the entire tree in memory. But you know what they say, premature optimization is the root of good video content. So what would we need to do if we wanted the largest possible Sierpinski triangle animation ever? Well, let's go back to another fun topic, Huffman encoding. Here, we were able to uniquely create a code word for each character in a string we wanted to encode by traversing through a tree. Every time we would go down the left branch, we would add a zero, and when we went down the right branch, we would add a one. What if the final string of ones and zeros was actually a set of functions to apply? That is to say, the string 0, 1, 0 would mean applying function 0, function 1, and then function 0 again to our root node's location. In that case, each node would no longer need to keep a location, but instead a set of function pointers, or a bit string that could be interpreted into a set of function pointers. More than that, because we have a set of three functions for this animation, we couldn't really use traditional bits, but would instead need to use base three bits, sometimes called trits, in a bijective three-based number system. This simply means that our counting would need to look like this, and not like this. In some sense, this directly solves our memory issue. Essentially, a breadth-first search for this tree is actually just counting in bijective base 3 trit space. This means that instead of having to keep an entire tree in memory, we just need to keep a trit string and increment it by one each time. After that, we can interpret each trit string as a series of functions to implement to find the new location of each child. And that's precisely what we did. Now, we ended up having to do some fancy bit logic to get our bits to act like trits, but it all worked out in the end. The code shown here was actually written by Kropev on stream, and honestly, it's really cool, but it might need its own video to fully describe. After we created a trit number system for the triangle, we then did the same for the square to create this animation and called it quits. In general, if you use a bijective base n number system, you should be able to do a breadth first search of a full nary tree by simply counting. The neat thing about this particular case is that now the memory footprint grows linearly with the number of levels, not exponentially. Admittedly, the computation required for each point goes way, way up, but that's a fair price to pay for minimizing memory. Anyway, that's all for now. This particular animation incorporated tree traversal, Huffman encoding, bit logic, and iterated function systems, which are all topics we've covered in the past on both YouTube and in the algorithm archive. Twitch, Discord, and GitHub sponsor links are all in the description. I decided for GitHub sponsors instead of Patreon for two reasons. One, GitHub will match any contributions, so if you pledge $1 to the algorithm archive, you're actually pledging two. The second reason is that, at its heart, this is a programming project and I wanted to reflect that and support the open source ecosystem in the best way I can. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.